Hi friends, I'm Jeff VG, and welcome to the show. If you're returning, welcome back. And if you're new to this channel, I hope you find what you're looking for. Last fall, I did an extensive review of drum software and drum apps. There's a link up above, that way. There's a link up above if you want to find out the details. I analyzed over 15 different software packages and made recommendations based on price and functionality. Most of those drum software packages are sample players, so they play drum samples from various sources, including the vendor themselves. And given that drum sample playing is the primary technology we use these days, it almost doesn't matter which package you use. There's something to be said for just picking one package, learning it, and sticking with it. I like Logic's Drum Machine Designer for a couple of reasons. First, it's included in Logic, so you don't have to buy anything extra. And number two, it houses up to 48 different drum sample parts. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to load kits from sources outside of Drum Machine Designer. We'll take a look at Ultrabeat, Battery from Native Instruments. Let's get into it. There are two primary methods for converting drum kits from other software into Logic's Drum Machine Designer. The first method is pretty straightforward. It's taking advantage of Drum Machine Designer's drag and drop capabilities. You're gonna find the source of samples in the Drum Machine software you're trying to convert from and just drag them into Drum Machine Designer. The biggest part of that effort is locating the sample files or know where they're being stored. And in this case, you're bringing in the raw, unprocessed sounds and it's fast and it's easy. Method number two is a little bit more complex. You're actually gonna create an audio file or a drum loop and using the transient analysis built into Drum Machine Designer, it will chop and assign each kit piece. And that includes effects and processed sounds from your source. And this will work with any drum loop or beat, but it does involve a few more steps and sometimes there's a bit of cleanup involved. Assuming you've downloaded all of the Apple content for Logic, which is I think maybe 72 gigabytes of data, Drum Machine Designer comes with a 170 kits and more than 3000 drum samples. So you might think, isn't that enough? Do we need more? Logic comes with Ultrabeat. If you've looked at Ultrabeat before, if you look at the blue area here on the channel strip and click on, put it next to Ultrabeat, you'll see in the library, well, lo and behold, there's another 109 kits uh, that come delivered in Ultrabeat. Why not use those in Drum Machine Designer as well? Surprisingly, Apple doesn't provide a way to convert Ultrabeat kits into Drum Machine Designer. So I'm not going to give you a complete tutorial on Ultrabeat, but a couple of things you should know is it is a sample player. There's 25 uh, notes, so you can have 25 drum kit pieces. They start from C1 on your MIDI keyboard up to C3, and you can preview the sounds by clicking on this play button. And you have different patterns down here you can choose from. Now, Ultrabeat is more than just a sample player. It's a drum synth and it's a sequencer. And a lot of people that are familiar with it are, may have used it to create their drum beats and drum sequences. Something to keep in mind is that the drum synth elements of Ultrabeat modify those samples. And that's all done in this part of the application. So it's got oscillators that you can add sound or noise. You've got uh, two LFOs, several envelopes, and other tools to modify that sample sound. So there's a difference here between method one and method two for converting in that you can go get the source samples, which are over here on the left, and drag them into Drum Machine Designer, but then you're gonna be missing the effects. So I'll, I'll show you what the effects sound like by turning them off and on. So now you're hearing just the raw samples. Now you're hearing it with the effects processing turned on. Now the method one approach is pretty straightforward. You'd create a track with Drum Machine Designer on it. You make sure you have an empty kit. If you don't, you go over to the library and choose empty kit as a starting point. And then you need to know the location of the Ultrabeat kit. It happens to be in 
library, application support, logic, UltraBeat samples. And if you look in here, you'll see a folder for each kit that comes with UltraBeat. So I'm looking here at Adept Machine, and it's made up of all of these samples. You can highlight those samples, drag them into Drum Machine Designer, and it will assign them to each one of the pads. Now the layout of those assignments might not be to your liking. You know, I like to see kick on C1, but it is a fast way to load them in. So you've got all your kit pieces available to you in a new Drum Machine Designer kit, and you can save that kit, and you can even save it with the same name that you used in UltraBeat. What I find sometimes when you've imported this way is that there's a little bit of cleanup to do. So some of those samples, maybe they're too long, you want to shorten the sample or adjust the length of the sample. And you may want to adjust some of the pad controls, like how much reverb, the volume of each, and whether you're using uh, pitch adjustments on things like the snare and the kick. You can make all those adjustments, save it as a kit, and you're ready to go. If you look at that directory of kits for UltraBeat, you'll find that there are some kits that have 25 samples or less, and there are some that have a lot more. So here's one called African Kit. It looks like it has about 100 samples, and you might be saying, well, how is that possible? Why are there so many samples? You can only have 25 notes in UltraBeat. And what they've done here is they've layered multiple uh, sounds in UltraBeat. So if you pull up the African kit, you'll see a particular sound is actually made up of four or five different samples at the same time, layered. So you can go through and preview all of those samples if you like and just pick the ones that you want uh, since you're going to be limited to 48 samples in Drum Machine Designer. But you will find all of the kits there, which is great. So one of the things I did was in order to capture all 25 samples, I've created a MIDI track that plays each note. So just turn off the sequencer. All I did was enter in MIDI notes. I made them all the same length. I assigned them all to velocity 100, and there's 25 notes. And if you look closely at UltraBeat, as I play that track, you can see each one of these notes being executed. And the reason we're doing that is that the patterns and drum beats that come in UltraBeat don't necessarily play all 25 drums. So I want to capture an audio loop that has all the components of this kit. Once I've done that, I can bounce that in place. File, bounce, track in place. That will create a new track. Now I have an audio track and I can listen to what's been created. And all I'm going to do is drag that into my project as Drum Machine Designer, and boom, it creates a kit with all those transients. Pretty neat. When you do that, it doesn't uh, label them, you know, kick, snare, clap, hi-hat. You'd have to go through and modify these titles, but basically all of the, all of the sounds are there. And if you want to modify things like um, maybe on this clap, you want to add reverb or increase the volume, you can do that. So you're adding effects post-conversion. And you can see it's created a 4x4 grid, so the first 16 samples are on the first page, and the remainder are on the second page for the total of 25. Now that you know how, you might ask why. And that's a good question. Why load all these drum kits into Logic's Drum Machine Designer? For me personally, I find it very confusing to deal with five, six, seven different drum software packages. So I'm trying to focus on doing everything within Logic. But if you already own Native Instruments Battery and you already own Playbeat or some of these other packages, there is an argument to be said that you could just use them as they are delivered. Let's walk through this process again using Native Instruments Battery 4. So I've got a battery kit open, and you can see this kit has 48 samples, uh, drum samples, that make up the kit. If you click on any one of the samples, over here you can actually see the name of the file. Clap, 
Afroshop 1.wave. Finding these sample files looks like a possibility. Well, here's the challenge. If you look into where Battery stores these things, they're in a folder under Native Instruments Contact called Battery 4 Factory Library. And in there, there is a sample folder. Unfortunately, you won't find the samples organized by kits. So for example, all the kick drums are here. Okay, so I'm, you know, the kick you're looking for is <laughs> somewhere there, but there's hundreds and hundreds of kicks to find. The kit definitions, you might think, oh, wait a minute, there's something there called kits. Well, they're in a proprietary format for native instruments and you can't read that format, but yes, there is a kit definition file for every kit and there's hundreds of kits that are delivered with battery four. So the process of finding all the sample files that make up a kit in battery involves looking for this name, grabbing those files, copying them into a folder, and then you're gonna drag that folder into an empty drum machine designer kit. That is the method one approach for battery. Now, some of the kits uh, don't necessarily have that many samples in them. So here's one that just has 16 samples in it. So it wouldn't take quite as long to convert. You got a big variety. But you have to be prepared for the scenario of having a battery kit that has up to 48 samples. Now, just like Ultrabeat, battery has the ability to modify those samples. There's ADSR adjustments you can make here. There's envelopes, there's effects. You can add modulation. A lot of details here that enhance and modify those raw samples into sounding like a real drum kit. If you use method one, you're just going to get the raw sample files, Drum Machine Designer, and then you can add your effects and adjustments in Logic after you've created the kit. The other approach would be method two. And in this case, you can see what I've done is because there's potentially 48 samples, I've changed that MIDI file that I used in the last example to include 48 notes. By letting that play, it would, uh, or by recording that, you'd get a drum loop with all 48 sounds. So in that A1 cell, it's playing C1 to C1, C sharp one, so on. Last one is B4. So just like last time, we're gonna bounce this track in place. And here we have our loop. Now that'll work for the transient detection, but the volume of each one of those drum hits is kind of low. So you might open it up in the editor and increase the volume or normalize the volume. By normalizing the volume, you just get a, a bit of a clearer sample to work with, a, a clearer loop. And then as a last step, we're going to drag that into a new track to make a drum machine designer kit, I'm getting a message that the maximum number of pads has been exceeded because we have more samples in that audio file than we have pads available in drum machine designer. First page, second page, third page, they're full. Still good, still an effective way to convert a battery kit to drum machine designer. Why bother with the whole effort to convert? Personally, I'm trying to develop my library of reusable kits in one package, rather than have to remember that kit I want is in battery and this other kit I want is in XO and another kit that I want to use is in Playbeat. It can get very overwhelming. I'm really talking about an overall strategy. It's not just for managing drum kits and those kit pieces, but it's also about managing patterns, MIDI, and reusable bits. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, click on the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. If you have comments, I'm always interested in what you have to say. Be sure to enter them and click the notification bell for any new videos that are coming out on my channel. Thanks for watching.